Let me tell you how the computer can help you with your sales. Firstly, of course, it works out premiums at a rate which is profitable both to you, the client, and of course the company. <laughs> Secondly, it looks after your client accounts without any effort from you. It sends out the bills, it advises clients when payments are due, and it not only keeps a record of... Mr. Goldblum. Sorry to interrupt. Go ahead, Lewis, you're doing fine. Thank you. Stanley Goldblum, the president of the Equity Funding Corporation of America. I'd now like to outline the specific glories of our computerized accounting system. Gentlemen, she will soon be running full steam ahead. Al, try the backup tape. a drop in salary to come out here, didn't you? Yeah. No, I thought that equity funding represented a unique opportunity for advancement. Today, I'm not so sure. <laughs> Who's at the top of all the big companies? I mean, who are the presidents? But it's accountants like you every time. Well, right. So, so, so you try a little harder. Right. Listen, Lloyd, I tell you, when we go in there with Mr. Levin, can we just stick together on this? Oh, sure. Sure. All right, don't worry about it. United we stand. With this terrific new sales organization, a shortage of clerical staff, uh, Lloyd can't even begin to estimate how much insurance we're selling. And if I could, with the computer having these teething troubles, we wouldn't know if we're making a profit on it anyway. Mr. Levin, it hurts me to admit that I can't supply you with any of the figures you need for the annual report. I'm in the same situation, Mr. Levin. Maybe worse. No, Lloyd, you're not being fair to yourself. This comes down to my department. Don't worry about it. Come on, sit down. Sit down. Relax. Now, Stanley Goldblum is president of a company with very large interests right across the financial spectrum. There's oil, natural gas, cattle breeding, real estate, offshore banking, mutual funds. Now, from where Stanley sits, he can see a whole other world. The world of the American business operations. Now, I've talked to Stanley about this problem. And Stanley tells me that his assessment of the insurance division's earnings is that we should achieve uh, an income of around $10 million on a year. Now, you boys don't think that's unreasonable, do you? Uh, no. No, Mr. Levin, I guess not. <laughs> okay, we go for a figure of $10 million net income. I know we've got to break that down. Gross figure before taxes, a figure for taxes, and a figure for constant expenses. You can do that, can't you? Well, there's no problem for me, because I can just take that bottom figure $10 million and work backwards from there. Well, I, I guess so, Mr. Levin. Was there something bothering you? Well, Mr. Levin, if it turns out we're not doing this amount of business, $10 million worth of business, we won't have the policies on file to justify that figure. I mean, we won't have sold the insurance to back up these figures that Art is getting out. But this is just a temporary accounting solution. That's right. I mean, insurance isn't like any other business. You know, pictures going all around all the time. Now, it might be that at one period, the accounts are up, one way or the other. Next financial period, we, we even things out. You're saying this is quite a normal practice in the insurance business. That's exactly what I'm saying. Now, don't worry about it. Hmm? Now, you let me have those figures in the next few days. Net income figure of $10 million and the breakdown so Stanley can write out his annual report. All right? Thank you. We'll run 
the policy listings file now, Linda. Is this the last batch? Yes, Mr. Tomlin. Are you absolutely sure that every single policy is on the computer? Yes, Mr. Joe, Tomlin. Joe, can we run Art Lewis's program? Will you kindly allow me to operate this department my way? Now, here we have the video display unit. A very complicated piece of machinery. Can you all see it very clearly? Where the hell is the printout? Uh, he's still doing his number down there, you know. <sighs> now I'd better go down there. That's supposed to be a computer he's running, not a tourist attraction. Hey, Art. Art, do you think that you can handle him okay? Can I ask you a little question? Yeah. How the hell did you ever get to work for equity funding? It's a good company, isn't it? Now, each of these lines tells us all we want to know about each individual policy. I'll just hold it there. And that's the policy number. The next figure represents the policyholder's age. Then we have sex, amount insured, Joe. and annual premium. Joe, why don't we have a look at the printout, please? I was just about to do that. Now, here we have printout. You get exactly the same details as you saw on the video display unit. But this gives us a permanent printed record, which supersedes all the old-fashioned bookkeeping and ledgers and files and so on. And it's totally acceptable to our auditors in the same way as any other form of bookkeeping. Joe, this isn't my program. This is just policy listings. Yeah. We'll run Art Lewis's program now, Linda. Now, this is a set of figures prepared for Mr. Lewis. The computer has added together the total income from the sale of insurance, deducted salesman's commissions, office overheads, and other costs. And here, coming up now, is the total amount of money made by the Life Insurance Division on the year. Our total income, our annual income, you might say. These are the figures Mr. Lewis has been anxiously waiting for so that he can submit them to our auditors who are currently examining the company accounts. All the policies are in the computer. It's my fault, I guess. I'm certainly worried that my figures might be a little out of line, but Jesus. Over two million short. Some error. I guess I'll just have to tell the auditors that I was, uh, I was just way off target. Ought to amend all those financials. No way. Now look, equity funding is committed to an insurance income of $10 million. Now, that's the figure that Stanley is incorporating in his announcement of company growth for the year. And that is the bottom number that the auditors have already. Now, we can't change it. It's not reasonable. Yeah, but Mr. Levin, the auditor's going to want to see the policies that back up the figures. We didn't sell that many policies. Look, didn't Joe show you that computer printing out all those policies this afternoon? The computer just keeps on printing them out. I should program the computer to fake policies for the auditors? Mr. Levin, can I ask you something? Did you know that those figures that Lloyd and I got out were going to be audited? Well, didn't you? I guess I just didn't think about it until they showed up last week. They're pretty hard to stall, Art. What are you telling them? I had to tell them we had computer malfunction. Interface problems. Interface problems. <laughs> God, that's terrific. Oh, God. That is beautiful. I mean, do they know what that means? <laughs> Look, I don't like standing on ceremony. If we're going to eat lobster, we drink burgundy, all right? Oh, look at that, look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. Mmm. Mmm. I get to feeling a little guilty around guys like you. Young, no? We got problems, problems all over the place. And I can't beat it. I love to eat. I love to eat! I love it. <laughs> Damn it, isn't this the most amazing seafood you've ever had in your life? Hey? Eh? Mm. I had 
tried to expand the master policy listening tape. Yeah. I mean, you can't just add a whole lot of policies onto the end of a tape, because every time somebody... Yeah, I know somebody, that. Oh, I yeah. Know. Yeah. Okay, so, I pull policy details off the genuine files, yeah. and I adapt the premiums and insurance figures to conform to our overall pattern. And then, I duplicate them over and over until I have enough to bring our totals up to the $10 million that we need. Uh, and nice, yeah. then, finally, I insert the phony policies onto the master policy listing. See? Uh, Oh, man, you're working late. Excuse us, just a second. So, um, I had to use three programmers to do all this, right? Because if one guy ran all three programs, he'd know exactly what we were doing. And it'd be all over the building that equity funding is writing phony policies to snow the goddamn auditors. <laughs> I mean, that's one hell of a corporate image, right? I don't think any part of it helps the corporate image. <sighs> yeah, right, Lloyd. Now, look. You'll see that I have coded the phony policies with the prefix 99, see? 99, yeah. Why is that? Oh, well, it's a kind of security device. When the computer recognizes that code, the 99, yeah. it trips a switch mechanism, which stops the phony policies from being printed out with the real ones, unless someone like myself who knows about the code instructs it to do so, like now for the auditors. You mean there are times when you wouldn't want the computer to print out the policy? Oh, sure. Like, uh, a good example. If they didn't have that code on them, yeah. the computer would print out the phony policies along with the rest, and the whole bunch would get sent automatically to the underwriters who buy policies from us on the reinsurance deal. Right? Now, we don't want our underwriters buying phony right. policies. You see, Mr. Levin, once the policies are printed out, uh, there's no way of telling the real from the phony. I don't okay. give a good goddamn, Fred. You just do something. I'll do something. Do something. Do. Stock's down to $18. Come on, I'll introduce you to the others. trouble in Haight-Ashbury last night. Some, uh, some white kids went in and beat the hell out of a storekeeper. <laughs> it's a really kind of tough place. We have a serious problem. All right. The market's down. The rumors. The share prices are down. That company has to generate some cash. Is there anything I can do to help? Oh, pecan pie. 